Next, we need to choose a capacitance value. Now, a cap's value is measured in farads, with one farad being an enormously huge number. So we generally talk about micro or nano or picofarads, which are one millionth, one billionth, and one trillionth of a farad. So these are pretty small numbers. Uh, a 0.047 microfarad cap is the same thing as a 47 nanofarad cap or a 47,000 picofarad cap. And we generally talk about microfarads down to about 0.01 microfarad, and then we switch to picofarads for the smaller caps. Now, a capacitor has a three-digit number on the side of it that tells you its value in picofarads. There's two digits followed by a third digit, which tells you how many zeros to tack on. So a 102, like this one, is 10 followed by two more zeros, which makes it 1,000 picofarads. A 682 would be 68 followed by two zeros, or 6,800 picofarads. And a 473 would be a 47 followed by three zeros, 47,000 picofarads, or as we mentioned before, 0.047 microfarads. Now, if there's a letter after the three numbers, like this one has a J, 102J, that's telling you about the tolerance. Uh, you've got to look it up on a table. A J uh, is plus or minus 5%. So this 102J is 1,000 picofarads plus or minus 50. So how does it work? Well, when you pass alternating current, like the audio signal coming out of your pickups, through a capacitor, the cap will pass through the fast-moving AC, or high frequencies, and attenuate or block the slow-moving AC, or low frequencies. So it's really a high-pass filter. So above a certain frequency, the signal will pass through the cap, and below that frequency, the signal will be cut off. That frequency is called the cutoff, or the corner frequency, and it's determined by the capacitance value. Now, a bigger capacitance will lower that cutoff frequency, allowing more high frequencies to pass through the cap. Now wait a minute, in a guitar's tone circuit, we want to be removing high frequencies, not passing them through. Well, in the guitar's tone circuit, the cap is wired to ground. Now if you've got your signal coming from your pickup to your jack, and you hang a cap off it wired to ground, what's going to happen is that since an electric signal always takes the easiest shortcut to ground if it can, the signal passing from your pickups out to the jack will see a path to ground through a cap, and what gets through that cap? only the highest frequencies. So the high frequencies will drop through the cap to ground and be lost, silent, while the rest of the signal continues onto the jack. That's why it's rolling off the high frequencies. Now if you put a resistor in front of that cap to ground, you're reducing the amount of signal that can get through, effectively changing the cutoff frequency of the circuit. Now a resistor and a cap working together like this are called an RC filter. If you make that resistor a variable resistor using a potentiometer, now you have a tunable cutoff frequency for your filter. When you turn the pot all the way down to zero, it's like pulling the resistor out. You're getting the full amount of capacitance and the full high cut. But as you turn the pot up, the increased resistance is changing the cutoff frequency progressively, allowing only the higher and higher frequencies to bleed through to ground. Uh, and that is a guitar tone circuit. So when choosing a capacitance value for tone, what you're really doing is determining what the range of the filter cutoff frequency is going to be when it's paired with the potentiometer. Now the most commonly used values are 0.047 microfarads and 0.022 microfarads. The, the 0.047 is mostly used with a 250k ohm pot and the 0.022 with a 500k ohm pot. Now in both of these setups, as you turn the knob down, the uh, cutoff frequency of the filter gets pretty low, resulting in a pretty muddy and dark sound. Uh, I'm betting that most people with this setup don't turn their knobs down that far. Uh, but it's really personal preference, and it depends on how you use your knob. Um, for me, I like to choose a smaller capacitance value so that you end up with a more useful uh, range in the pot, even all the way down at zero, and it doesn't get that muddy. So let's bring out the tone thing again. What I have on this side is a bunch of orange drop polypropylene caps. They're all the same material type. Um, and the capacitance values range from 0.047 microfarads on the high end uh, down to 0.022, 0.01, and then 6,800 picofarads, 4,700, 3,300, and 1,000. Now at the bottom end here, I'm not expecting uh, the 1,000 picofarad to be very effective as a tone control because the cutoff frequency will be very high. Um, only the highest of the high frequencies will be rolled off. Um, 
So I'm not going to go as in-depth on my um, playing examples as I did with material types because the outcome is pretty expected. Uh, the, the bigger capacitors will roll off more of the high end as we turn it down and the smaller capacitors will roll off less. And I'm expecting to choose something in the middle, maybe 6800 or 0.01 microfarad, um, as a useful range where even when you turn it down all the way, um, it, it still is a pretty useful sound. So let's get started. So first let's hear what each capacitor sounds like when the potentiometer is turned all the way to zero. Zero resistance, so it's the full capacitance and the full high cut. Starting with the try to make any characterizations of the sounds here or reach any conclusions. I'm going to let your ears do the deciding. Uh, it truly is a personal preference what you use for your tone cap. Now if you've listened to this and you still can't decide or it's not clear to you, um, do what I did. Make a tone thing. This is pretty cool. It didn't take long to do. As long as you're not getting into these boutique high-end paper and oil caps, um, it's really not that expensive to buy a nice assortment of caps like this. And uh, use alligator clips before you break out the soldering iron. Just experiment. See what works for you and what you like. I hope this helps, and thanks for watching.